Hey guys, so today I am going to be rebuilding the goth mansion and this will count as a video for my Sims 4 World Makeover series where I am trying to revamp all of the existing lots in The Sims 4 and also editing the families and things like that. So far for that series all that I've been doing is editing existing builds. I haven't actually tried to build anything from scratch and so this is the first time I'm doing that because I did edit the existing goth household and their house after the makeover that I gave it still looked terrible so I decided to just rebuild it because I was kind of in the mood to build something kind of different kind of fun something that I hadn't really done before and so yeah that's why you're getting a speed build also with these videos usually you would get a create a sim portion of the video but the reason why we don't have one for the goth family is because I made over the sims months before I decided to get around to doing this build and I don't remember what they look like but honestly the sim that got the most of a makeover was Bella Goth just because she's iconic and she needed to have better outfits than the base game gave her and I didn't know if that was really going to be that interesting for this video so I left out the creative sim version and I did not put my renovated goth family on the gallery but if you guys want to see my I guess made over goth family then I'll put them up on the gallery if you guys are interested. This build is interesting because I feel like when I started this series I said that I wasn't going to take the time to rebuild every single lot but I think I might have changed my mind on that. Just because I was watching people on YouTube do builds and stuff like that and I just thought that maybe it'd be a little bit of fun to actually rebuild all these lots and kind of transform them but at the same time try to keep the same vibe because literally what I did with the goth house is that it still has kind of the same shape that it originally had. It still has the same kind of vibe that the old house had. It's not really that much different but I thought that you know building it from scratch and making it my own actually is the better makeover in terms of um, this series because like what I was doing before was just taking the base build and maybe just adding a few decorative items here and there to give it a little more life but I think I actually enjoyed rebuilding from scratch more even though it's a little bit more daunting and will take a lot longer but, you know, if people like James Turner, Deligracy, and Little Simsy, and everyone like that can do it, then why can't I? Uh, it just might take me a little bit longer because this is not my job and I have other things going on in life. Uh, so I can promise you when I'll ever finish this whole Sims for world makeover considering they keep adding worlds and packs and things and not to mention the fact that like I think I started the series last year two years ago I, I feel like it's been a couple years and uh, I'm still rebuilding Willow Creek I think I've done about five or six lots in Willow Creek and so yeah it's gonna take me forever to get through all of this but I am enjoying the challenge I am enjoying like building when I can or when I remember Recently, you guys know, if you follow me on this channel, the thing that I've kind of been into the most for the last year has been my Super Sim save because I always upload my builds from my Super Sim save to the channel. And yeah, so I've just been, you know, spending the last year living my best life on my Super Sim challenge. And I really want to do a video on that to show you guys the progress and stuff that I've made. So I won't talk about it too much in this video, but... I'm actually really proud that I've stuck with that save game and it's actually kept me interested enough in it to keep going back to it. Um, and I think that one of the things that really helped actually was that Snowy Escape came out at the end of last year because it meant that like once I would kind of finished the aspirations and stuff I was working on I could immediately jump into the new pack with my current sim. And so yeah I feel like I've just matured as I've gotten older to a new sim player who plays a save game more than once. So yeah I'm really proud of myself and I thought I'd share that with you guys. Anyway back to the build so when I first started to furnish this house I thought 
oh my gosh, I've made it too big. And you guys know that that is a very common problem that I tend to have anytime I try to build something. There's always the chance that I build it too big and then I'm struggling to put furniture in. And I thought that was going to be the case this time, especially with the living area and the kitchen. I kind of just thought those rooms were like too big. But then I started to put things in and I realized that it's actually like a good size. Um, maybe it's a little bit on the too big side, I would say, just because some of the bedrooms and stuff look a little bit bare. I think I still need to work on the sizing of my builds. But honestly... This one's not bad. Like I feel like in terms of like a big mansion house that I was building, I feel like it's a decent size and you can fit a lot of stuff in. So yeah, not as terrible as I thought it was going to be. And also with this build, I decided to challenge myself a little bit because in the beginning I was only going to use base game because I thought, okay, if I'm going to rebuild the goth house from the base up, I kind of want it to be accessible for everyone if I was going to put it on the gallery because the goth house is iconic and like I feel like a lot of people like to play with that family, but they might not necessarily have all the packs. So I decided to try and limit myself as much as possible. And that was actually working out pretty well uh, for about five minutes uh, when I was trying to choose wallpaper for the house. And then I was like, this is not working for me. I need different wallpapers. And that's when I decided that I would incorporate the vampire pack as well. So this build only uses BS game and the vampire stuff pack. And the reason why I chose the vampire stuff pack is because I feel like it lends it itself really well to the goth house because the vampire pack really is that gothic kind of vibe and it also has some really glamorous furniture and amazing wallpaper so that's the pack that I decided to go for um, when I was trying to choose one to use for this build and I'm really proud of myself that I stuck to just those two packs because I feel like normally what happens is that you buy a new pack, you build with the items one time, and then you never really think about that pack again. Um, especially one like the Vampire Stuff Pack, for me anyway. It's one of the ones that I bought more so for the furniture than the actual gameplay because honestly, I feel like I played for Vampires for five minutes and I wasn't really enjoying it. So yeah, I mean, it really makes you like revisit the packs and actually remind yourself why you spent that money to begin with. And yeah, I also think it really challenges you to decorate in a different way than you normally would because I feel like vampires and like the style of that pack doesn't really lend itself to my everyday building style. So I think it was really good that I got to, you know, explore a little bit with the pack as well as the base game because I really don't remember the last time that I really tried to use the base game items. I feel like I'm always reaching for items from different packs to make the builds a little bit better but I do see a lot of the simmers on YouTube actually try more often to build with the base game and I guess it has a lot more variety than I thought because uh, literally when I look at like little Simsy's builds and stuff and she uses like just base game I find it really impressive because I can just never find good items that I want in base game but you know like I said if I if the other YouTubers can do it then so can I or at least I can try to I think I've rambled enough. I know I haven't really talked about the build. I'm really sorry, but uh, this build does contain three bedrooms for the goths. It has a room up in the tower for Alex. It has the purple bedroom for Cassandra and then the red bedroom for Bella and Mortimer. It also contains a very tiny butler's headquarters kind of room and I decided to do that on a whim because I needed a bedroom because I wanted the goths to have a butler anyway but as well as like just a bed I also included a little ensuite a little kitchenette so your butler's set to live with the goths and yeah, so this is on the gallery if you guys want to download it. All you have to do is search simming and such or hashtag goth mansion rebuild or something similar to that. I never remember the hashtag. It'll be in the description below. But yeah, 
uh i guess that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this build if you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more and let me know in the comments below if there's another household in particular that you want me to do next in this series because so far i'm kind of just going in order i'm just going to go through all the neighborhoods in Newcrest and see what we can do with them. I think that I will in the end go back to the first few households that I did in Newcrest and just rebuild them from scratch just because if I'm gonna rebuild all the other lots I might as well go back and do the ones that I revamped in the beginning. Um, but yeah uh, I guess that's everything. Like I said I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.